So today we're going to focus on the topic of protis, right? So protis is, as you can remember, is under the domain of eukarya. So all living organisms, right? If you fit the characteristics of living organisms, you can be classified into either one of these major domain. The first one is bacteria. The second one is archaea, A R C H A E A. Right, archaea, and then the last one is eukarya, which protist comes from. So, bacteria and eukarya, bacteria and archaea, both of them are prokaryotes, right? Prokaryotes means that they don't really have a nucleus. Pro means before, so they don't have a nucleus, they don't have a membrane bound organelle, uh, and eukarya has made is made of a eukaryotic cell. So eukaryotic cells means that these cells have a nucleus. The genetic information is in the nucleus and they have membrane-bound organelles such as Golgi apparatus, um, mitochondria, or even chloroplasts. Most all prokaryotes are unicellular. However, most of the eukaryotes are, are multicellular. Some of them are unicellular. So eukary or eukarya have, are either in unicellular or multicellular. Uni means one cell and multi means many cells. And within the domain of eukarya, there are four kingdoms, right? After domain, the next categorizations will be kingdom. And there are four kingdoms that we need to learn. Protis is the first one. Protis, fungi, animalia, and plants, plantae, they are all from the kingdom of eukarya. So they all have eukaryotic cells. So all eukaryotic cells properties uh, can be found from the protease, fungi, animal, and plant cells. So we're going to focus on the protease cells. Protease is majority of them are unicellular cells. So they are make they are organisms made out of one cells only. However, some of them are multicellular. So if they're multicellular, they are not specialized, they live together as a colony. Next, proteins usually can be found in moist or water region such as the pond water. So if you get the pond water and put the pond water under the microscope, you'll be able to find these tiny little organisms. Proteins can be classified by looking at the way in which they get their food from. Okay? So we classify them based on the method they get their food. There are three ways in which the proteins can get their food from. The first one is they get their food like how an animal will get their food from. Okay, so we call this kind of animals, uh, this kind of proteins, animal-like proteins. So animal-like proteins. The next proteins would be a plant-like proteins. So they can generate their food sources from photosynthesis. They behave kind of like a plant. And the last but not least is they behave like a fungal. So a fungus usually get the material from that organic material. So we call this kind of protease fungal-like protease. So animal-like proteins are heterotroph, which means they cannot generate their own food resources. They have to obtain the food by absorbing other food molecules. So animal-like proteins can be classified by how they move around, right? The method in which they move the cells throughout the environment. So there are a few ways in which they can move around. So first, is they can use a cilia. So cilia is this toes, those tiny hair structure that can be found on the surface of the cell. The second one is flagella. So flagella is a long, weak-like structure that can move the cells around. The third one is a pseudopod. So a pseudopod is an extension of the cytoplasm of the cell. So if I draw cells like this, they can push the cell's boundary, you know, to a little bit to the right, and then eventually it will be able to make the right parts of the cells longer, and it can move forward just like that. So the extension, this part of extension over here, is called a pseudopod or pseudopodia. Pseudo means fake, pod means feet, and the last but not least is a parasite, right? So amoeba, uh, sorry, animals like cells. Those proteins, they live in the host, so as the host moves, it moves as well. Some of... So, a 
Some of the examples of this animal-like protist, which also called protozoa, are amoeba, paramecium, euglena, which interestingly euglena can either do can do both. It can be heterotroph and autotroph at the same time because it has a pigment, it also has a mouth structure in which it can ingest ingest food into its body. So it's green cell like this. And a classic protozoa disease that's caused by protists is malaria. Next, moving on, we will focus ourselves at plant-like protists. So plant-like protists, just like how is named? They are autotroph, right? Autotroph means that they are able to get the energy from the sunlight. So they have these pigments that are in the cells that can detect sunlight and make a uh, food through the process of photosynthesis. So remember, plants like protists can do photosynthesis and they live in colony, right? A majority of them are living in colonies. For example, such as giant seaweed, kelp, or even algae. So these are all just some of the examples of plants like protists. And they kind of look like this. Just a sketch of a giant seaweed or a kelp looks like under the water. Last but not least, we have fungal like protists. Just like the name, it behaves kind of like a fungus. They are decomposer of the our natural world. They can feed on decay or dead organic matter, right? They can secrete acid or enzymes that can break down this material and absorb the nutrients from it. So some of them can even make spores. They cannot make mushroom, but they can reproduce through the formation of spores. They can kind of like a more simpler version, right? Like a simpler version of a fungus, but they're not exactly like a fungus. So sometimes we can we so that's why biologists categorize them as a fungal like protist and not a real fungus. Some of the examples are like a slime mold or a water mold. So here we go. I have summarized everything that you need to know for protists, right? The general idea is that protist is kind of like the ancestor to all the other eukaryotes that can be found in the domain of eukarya. So they kind of behave very similarly to animals, plants and fungi. And with that, I rest my case. I'll see you next video.